Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, um, if you haven't noticed, maybe I'm uh, shortening up the videos in length and just releasing them in a little quicker order. Uh, I noticed on some of the trending that most folks weren't watching much past seven minutes or so. Um, so I'll start doing a little bit smaller video set and just releasing them more often so it's a little easier to digest. Um, where we last left off is I was working on trying to finish the connections between the uh, rear fuselage and the main section of the fuselage and uh, more fiddling with the uh, control cables or control rods. Um, again, it takes time. Um, you'll see me standing there around looking at things and um, another builder friend of mine said that, you know, there's sometimes you just come out in the garage and you just look at stuff. Um, and I do find myself spending time um, just kind of observing or, or looking through the next steps. And uh, some of the build manual is a little weird in this process because it seems like so much comes together in just like one quick swoop. Like in the matter of a couple of pages, there's like control the center fuselage or connect the center fuselage. Um, once you do that, then the control cables or control uh, rods and then like you know, you start working on the firewall. And it was just, it's like, I gotta break this down into smaller chunks. Um, so because I'm concerned about any flex that might be in the uh, fuselage and it impacting the control cables or control rods for the um, flaps and ailerons, I decided to go ahead and uh, get it as close as I could on the control portion of things. And then uh, um, work on getting the skins on the sides. Now I'm not fully attaching the skins because um, I do plan on putting in uh, aluminum fuel lines as instead of the factory supplied rubber ones. Um, the factory supplied ones you have to change those out after five years and I'd much rather do a, a permanent install on the fuel lines versus um, having to come back through and rerun uh, new fuel lines in five years. So just taking that extra step, but because of that, I can't put the side skins on until um, I have the fuel lines run, um, but I really need to get the, the fuselage as it is off the bench because it's just too high to work on some of this and I need to get it a little bit lower. So uh, another nephew of mine, I uh, see Nathan in the maroon shirt there and then uh, his younger brother, Elliot, uh, got them a, a rare moment of them working on a project together. So uh, um, that, that's a milestone right there. And they were just cleaning the, the, the covering off the aluminum. And here I'm um, doing a test fit on some of the uh, ribs that help reinforce the skin when it's attached to the side. Anyway, so the process at this point in time is uh, I wanted to get the skins on because that front portion of the, the front fuselage is super f flexible and it needs the structural support of the side skins in the firewall to make the entire length of the fuselage rigid. Um, and that's the safest way that I could determine to move this entire section off of the main bench and onto some sawhorses to get a little lower to the ground. Because you can see uh, with the side skins on there, it's just right at my chin level. And uh, even standing on top of the step stool there, it's uh, not quite high enough for me to reach down inside. Uh, my wife, Lori, came out and helped hold the skin for a little bit. And um, uh, the process I'm doing here is I'm just putting in a lot of Clecos to make sure that everything's squared away. And it, 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 it's all pretty well lined up, so I'm pretty happy with how that went together as well. Um, you can see the top skin got removed off the rear portion of the fuselage at this stage. Um, I gave my nephew something to do, Nathan, and uh, he likes working with the Clecos, so not a big deal to have him do that. Um, in this section here, I'm just uh, trying to get all the rib portions. Um, called a whole bunch of folks over, and we moved it off the bench. Um, it wasn't so much that it was really heavy. It was more along the lines of it's just kind of big, and uh, i much rather have too many hands on it helping move it versus not enough and something getting dropped along the way. Um, you can see the front portion of the uh, firewall is in place there and that's to actually help with the structural support for the move because um, the side skins alone were not strong enough to keep that 
that whole section together. Um, the, so the, the skins are, you know, structural component to the overall airplane. And um, that's why that got put that far together. Um, at this point in time, I'm getting the eye bolts installed and uh, then working on getting the uh, control rods put in place and um, then running you know, cables and uh, just starting to really get serious about riveting a lot of the components inside the, uh, the fuselage itself. Um, you'll notice the orange noodles uh, are on the top portion of the skin uh, while it's being held in place. Um, those are definitely super handy because the, the leaning over into the, the fuselage there um, would get sharp on the edges after a period of time. So I'm just going through and getting all the uh, control points with the, the, the eye bolts uh, put in place and um, torquing them down and getting that all ready to start getting put in the airplane. The right, or the, the yeah, the right control rod, the one that I'm showing you there, for whatever reason is like much stiffer than the other one. The left side there is really smooth. So that's what I'm working on next. Anyway, um, thanks for joining. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will be happy to respond. Thanks.